The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Joining us on uh, this episode of the Soybean School, we're pleased to have Dennis Lang, Provincial Pulse Specialist with Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development. And Dennis, we're standing in a soybean plot here just south of uh, Morris, Manitoba. Can you fill us in on uh, on what we're looking at? Well, this is one of our core sites that we have in Manitoba. We have three other ones, uh, St. Adolph, Portage and Carmen. At this site, we look at all different soybean varieties and all different maturities. Um, We have the very early season lines in this trial. We also have the very long season lines. And I always encourage growers, if you really want to see differences in soybeans, is to come out in that kind of that first week of September, late August time period, and and just have a walk through and and see what differences are. Because um, what I'd like to do with this interview today is just talk about, you know, what those visual differences in the guide look like, what five days earlier than the check looks like, what 10 days longer than a check looks like. That's what I like to cover here today. So the variety to your uh, to your right uh, is obviously an early maturing variety, which is quite noticeable at this time of year. Yes, most definitely. So this variety that we see here on the right, uh, this one is considered 95% brown pod, um, physiologically mature today. Uh, what that means is that means you're about seven to 10 days from harvest. So moisture content is still high enough that you couldn't go in here and harvest today, but uh, in about a week from now, these are gonna be uh, dry enough uh, below that 14% moisture range that uh, um, you're going to be able to uh, get a nice quality sample. But uh, typically when we do our ratings, uh, we do relative days to maturity compared to a check. Uh, the check in this particular trial is, uh, is a Pioneer line and uh, that's the line that you see just to my left here. And between these two varieties, if this one's mature today, the one beside me here, uh, which is that mid-season line, would be about seven to 10 days or so uh, longer maturity than that early season line. Um, that's not a bad thing to have uh, mid-season line still green at this stage. Um, we're in an area here where we can grow mid and long season uh, maturity uh, soybeans and still produce very good yields. Sometimes when you go too early in this, in this zone, you give up some yield. Okay, so we've looked at some short and, and mid-season lines, Dennis. We've moved to a different spot in the in the plot here. Can you fill us in on what we're looking at in uh, in this, obviously, a, a longer season variety? Well, uh, in this particular plot that we're looking at here, one just to the left of me here, here when you actually look at the pod, the top pods, they're still quite green and firm yet. Uh, this variety, compared to our check, would be about 7 to 10 days longer. Uh, this would be something that would be suited for southern Manitoba. Uh, wouldn't put it anywhere further than Winnipeg. Um, and in this case here, we're still looking for quite a while yet before we're doing any, uh, any uh, maturity ratings on this one. Am I concerned about it at this stage, looking um, the fact that we've had some decent weather, that it's still quite green yet? In this case, I wouldn't be too concerned because it's grown in this area. Now, if this variety was grown in western Manitoba and it looked this green at this stage, that would be a bit more of a concern to me because that, that tells me that that variety really isn't suited for that region because that season is a lot shorter than what we have here. So. A year like this, in this location as well, we've seen a fair bit of moisture and so we're not seeing these beans dry down prematurely? No, typically uh, in some years I've been I've been doing maturity ratings for two weeks by this date already. Uh, this year, uh, however, with the rains that we've gotten, the beans have hung on a little bit more, but that also means some good things for yield as well. In past years, we've had some very dry conditions at the end of July and early August. That time period is very critical when it comes to yield for soybeans. If you don't get moisture or you don't have or you have a lack of moisture, yields are greatly reduced. So this year, um, I'm expecting some very good numbers, from not only from our plots but also from uh, from growers' fields as well this year. So obviously, a, a super early maturing variety isn't going to yield as much as uh, as a mid-season or a, or a longer season variety. How how do you recommend growers go through that process, especially at this time of year when we're already looking to maybe next spring maybe not wanting to think about it too much but we are of course getting that visual of of how the varieties looked at this point in the growing season well what i like to recommend to growers is when you're picking your varieties uh in the fall uh grab a copy of seed manitoba in there there's a nice uh, maturity map and it breaks out manitoba into different zones um early season very early season mid-season and long season zones um if you're in the morris area you're in that you fall into that mid to long season category so if your normal planting time is you know, mid-May to end of May, 
you'd be wanting to focus on that mid to long season uh, uh, lines. Now, if you're looking at the seed guide and you see a very early season line that actually out yields the Czech variety, which is a mid season line, that I would give some real consideration to. Because what that tells me is, even though that variety is earlier, it still has some very good yield potential. So you tend to use that percent of check as your, as your guide to determine, you know, if you, are you 5% higher than the check? Or are you 5% lower than the check? Where does that fall within maturity? So you can kind of use those uh, as, as a tool. Now, if you were planting something like this really early season one in the Morris area, that might be a selection that if you got into a wetter year and you're getting closer to the end of, end of May and maybe into June uh, and you had access to something like this early season line, that would be a real benefit to you. Um, but on a year when you don't get, uh, um, you know, you get in a normal time, you may, depending on the variety, you may give up some yield potential because it is so early. You, you touched on it briefly, Dennis, but can you expand on how you decide when a variety is mature, when it has reached that date, and you can make that call on how many days to maturity or what the maturity rating is? Well, typically what we do is it's all based on your seeding date and when it reaches the R8 growth stage, which is physiological maturity. Uh, what I typically do is when I first come out to a trial uh, early in the season, um, you know, or maybe late August, uh, the first thing I look for is leaf drop and yellow pods. Uh, we have a range from about 10 to 70% yellow pod. Well, that kind of gives me an indication that the beans are starting to change, but they're not physiologically mature. Once we get into what's called brown pod, and brown pod is where you, those pods have their, their natural full color, and when it reaches that the R8 stage or 95% brown stage, when you look at these plots, what you see is no leaves left. Uh, you see the pods, when you shake the plants, they start to rattle. And that date is, uh, I will put that down on my, on my spreadsheet, and that will be our, our, uh, our maturity date. So we replicate these varieties three times within this trial. And we do this trial in, in a total of four different locations. So that way, when I combine all the data, what I'm able to provide to growers is a realistic um, maturity of uh, ranking between different varieties. So this one here would be considered R8 today. So um, maturity wise, you're probably looking without doing the, uh, doing a quick calculation in my head, you're probably looking about 105 days uh, compared to the Czech variety that uh, might be more like 117 days. Um, so in that in that range. So and every year of days maturity vary a little bit, but it's the relative days maturity that we look at. So typically the early season lines are always earlier than the than the than the check mid season lines, and the long season lines are typically longer than the long season lines. So there's you might vary a day or two, but typically that's how we would do it. All right. Finally, then if R8 is maturity, when is it's safe to have a frost on these beans because that ultimately that's what matters when we look at maturity ratings. Well, exactly. So um, with maturity, um, yield losses will still occur if you're at that R5, R6, or R5 growth stage. Their yield losses are quite high. For the most part, Manitoba right now is well past that. So that, that part of it uh, is not a concern. Uh, we're into the R6 growth stage now. And what that means is in the top four nodes of the plant, you're going to have a full seed. And we're probably approaching into the R7 stage where you start to see at least one pod on the plant that has its natural brown color to it already. So at, our, at R7, you probably won't see very much yield loss at that stage, uh, maybe 5% at most. Uh, you may see some green seed if you get a hard frost. Now, a minus one frost, if we got a minus one frost today, all it would really do is, is kind of freeze the tops of the plants and leaves might drop off, not a big deal. Um, if we got a minus five frost, for example, then you would probably see that green seed lock in, um, but really no yield loss. You just see a higher, higher pick or higher damage to the seed. All right. Thanks for your time, Dennis. Thank you.